Hey, what's up, everybody? I am live. Um, have not been live in so long. I think the last time I did a live stream is when I opened the Weller Foolproof like six months ago. So bear with me, a little rusty, but a lot of interesting stuff on the show tonight. I've been doing a couple of videos recently about secondary markets. Um, really good article in Whiskey Advocate magazine that I did a video review on, uh, kind of going through exactly what the secondary market kind of looks like now, what it looked like before. Um, and then Whiskey Advocate also did a top 12 um, most flipped whiskeys, which I kind of did like a critique video on, um, kind of gave my insight into that, where I kind of saw it from my perspective, um, agreed, disagreed with some of the stuff they had on there, um, and then kind of added my own uh, bottles, what I thought that uh, I see quite frequently on the secondary market. So I've got a couple of bottles here tonight to open. Um, kind of just saved up a couple packages that I've got in the last week or so um, to kind of do it in kind of a continuation of those videos, kind of share with you, you know, what it looks like to get a market uh, bottle that you've got uh, from the secondary market. So a couple of them um, were secondary market lottery wins, which I'll kind of describe a little bit in detail. And then one of them I actually purchased uh, straight out on the secondary market. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, hope everyone's staying safe out there. See a lot of familiar faces in the chat already. Richard, what's going on, man? Uh, you better win something and I'll be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob, Chris David, uh, Scotch Buggy, of course, Insectica, um, Whiskey Mystery. What's up, Phil? How's it going? Puffs and Drams, uh, Devin's in the house. What's going on? Red Beer Racing. Uh, Lucky, you know, sent you again, man. How's it going? Cheers. Uh, Charles Dixon, uh, Lawless Claus. What's going on, guys? Um, currently drinking a little bit of Buna Heaven 12. Um, cracked this recently, the newer release. I haven't had Buna Heaven 12 in so, so long. Uh, still really good whiskey. Really nice finish. I've forgotten how long the finish is on this whiskey. For a 12-year-old entry-level um, core range stuff. This thing finishes like for very, very long. 46 point something percent. What is it? 46.3. Definitely, uh, well, elongates that finish for sure. Really like this stuff. It's got a nice like hazelnut, chocolate, almond kind of thing going on for me. Really, really nice. Starting with this, uh, maybe a little spoiler, a little, uh, prerequisite for, uh, what's going to come tonight. Um, so yeah, I guess without further ado, oh, uh, you see the dartboard behind me? Uh, it's been a while since we played the, uh, semi-blind dartboard challenge where I try to guess, um, some of my own whiskey, um, blind. So we'll do that later, um, do a giveaway, of course, um, with that as well, so stay tuned for that. Um, all right, let's get into it. First bottle that I'm going to open tonight, uh, it's one that you saw in the thumbnail. It was a secondary market lottery win. So I'll just quickly explain private um, raffles in the secondary market. Uh, essentially, you buy a spot, um, you pay a uh, percentage of the total bottle cost, and if your number hits, you win the bottle. So if a bottle's worth 100 bucks, there's 10 spots, each spot's $10, uh, your number hits, you win. Simple as that. So I was lucky enough um, to win this bad boy. So here it is what it looks like. Oh, spoiler, I've already opened all of these, obviously. I had to make sure that they were sitting upright when they were storing. One thing I hate about getting shipped bottles is this, you know that they're sitting like this for like weeks at a time. Um, so as soon as I got them, obviously open them, make sure that they're intact, not leaking, and uh, uh, sitting upright for sure. These uh, little wine packages are always great um, for shipping in. Definitely gives a lot of protection on the bottle. So uh, 2019 George T. Stag. So the reviews on this one are kind of all over the place. Um, some people saying that it's a little disappointing being a low, lowest proof I think they've released yet, 116.9, so 58.45%. Uh, one cool thing that people do when they're shipping bottles, I don't know if you can see that, the parafine or parafilm wax covering on the top just prevents leakage and whatever else. Um, Make sure that temperature changes during shipping won't like push this cork up. 
always uh, something to think about when shipping, especially in the summer months when temperatures get hot and cold. You know, this thing's sitting in a warehouse for a while. Definitely don't want the cork to start pushing up on it. Um, definitely seen bottles leak before. Not in my experience, but it has happened. Um, so yeah, George T. Stagg, uh, big, big fan of George T. Stagg. Have a couple bottles, uh, 2017. Um, actually, I have a 2018 on its way as well. Won that in a poker game the other night. Uh, super fortunate to win that one too. So that's the first one, uh, George T. Stagg. Kind of wary to uh, to try this one just because people are saying, you know, Stagg Jr. sometimes outshines this in blinds. If you watch uh, good friend uh, Jason, he picked um, batch 12 over over this batch in a blind. Um, so we'll see what I'll do with that one. Um, let's see what's going on in the chat. Hope everyone's doing safe, keeping safe out there. Um, what's everyone drinking tonight? Eric Waite saying the Buna 12, not just for breakfast anymore. Yeah, it's like it's such a utility whiskey. Um, I think it's great for anyone from beginner, intermediate, you know, you just want to pour it open and, and uh, not have to think too hard about it. But I mean, it delivers on. So many different levels. It's really good, complex whiskey. Um, yeah, Devin Dartboard in the back. I think Devin might have been, or sorry, um, Kevin. I think, Kevin, you won one of these competitions before, if I remember correctly. It's been so long. I'm pretty sure I sent you a sample or something uh, with the dartboard. It's only blind dartboard challenge. All right, bottle number two. I kind of just put a little bit of tape back on this one after I opened it because it was a little uh, bulging out of the uh, out of the package. So this one, uh, this was also a uh, lottery win, so like a raffle win. Uh, one thing a lot of people do uh, when shipping bottles, they put a little rattle. Sometimes it's a pasta, a box of pasta, uh, a box of nails, something like that. This will disguise the lugging sound that liquid makes in a bottle. So definitely a trick of the trade, uh, people putting something that rattles in the box. So it's always nice to see that. All right. We got Glenfarclas family cask. This one is a 2000, no, sorry, a 1993 distillate bottled, what did I write down? Bottled 2014. So it's 20 plus years old from 20 to 21 years old. Um, refill sherry cask. So this is more of kind of like an intro, um, kind of like a starter family cask, I'd say. Refill Sherry Cask, uh, 20 years old. I think these things retailed for around 250 pounds or so. So definitely the cheaper side of the family casks from my experience anyway. Some of these obviously get up to crazy, crazy money. You know, they get to 40, you know, 50 plus years old. Um, so yeah, excited to try this. Never owned a family cast before only ever tried one uh it was the one that rob whiskey in the six had uh, i believe his was a 1991 bottled 2018 so his was 26 plus years old i think it was a first fill cherry cast judging by the color of this it's very light you can see that that's probably if not second fill definitely third third fill cask i would say it's a sherry butt, refill sherry butt. Uh, limited to just um, 530 bottles. Sometimes with refill butts, um, you never know. Like definitely not gonna be the sherry bomb that some family casts are, but sometimes when you have that really good cask and you throw it in there again, you get amazing results. I've had amazing refill sherry cherry cast just because they keep 
you know, they keep those casts around. I think for the family casts, you got to assume that they're going to do a refill. They're going to make sure that the first cast was, uh, was a good one. So interesting. Um, with this bottle that 59.1% ABV, I believe that's probably cast strength for sure. Um, cast number 1614, refill sherry butt. It's a 700 ml. So there you go. Really cool. Um, these are valued on the Canadian secondary market. I think it was, so it was $55 a spot times 10 spots. So the evaluation on this was 550 Canadian dollars for that one. So that over there. That's cool. All right, let's go on in the chat. Got one more to go. Casey's in the house, just poured some Buna 12. Love it, yeah. Buna 12, man. It's a good deal. I don't know what you guys pay in your area. I know here in Ontario, it's kind of expensive. I think they want around 90 Canadian dollars for it. Out in Alberta, I'm sure it's way less than that. Maybe like, what, 60 out there? Um, in the States, I know you pay for Buna 12 in the States, 40 bucks maybe, 45, 50. Robin's in the house. What's going on, man? How are you? Yeah, Lawless Claw is saying uh, typical Farkless tired <laughs> as fuck casting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, Lawless, would you say that that's like even though maybe a fourth fill? I don't know how many times they recycle these casts. I guess they can't really do fourth fill. They're doing, well, I guess they could. I mean, 20 years in the cast. Interesting. It'd be interesting to try it. Um, definitely would be a lighter profile for sure. Graham saying the Buna 12 in Nova Scotia was 90. Yeah, so that's the same price as Ontario. A little too much, I think. Uh, we got one more. One more to go. Uh, so this last one, um, this was a pure impulse buy by me. Uh, it was a bottle that I've heard about before. Um, it's super, super limited and it popped up. The seller had seven bottles available and all of them were spoken for in three minutes. That's how fast they went. I'll get to it. All right, so here it is. Uh, lots of packaging, always, you always wanna over wrap when you're shipping bottles. Uh, the secondary market groups that I'm a part of, it's always the seller's responsibility um, for first delivery. So if the bottle breaks during the delivery, it's that person's, the seller's responsibility to replace the bottle or replace the full price of the evaluation. Here's one thing you see with us Canadians, uh, craft dinner. Again, I explained that before. Uh, the rattle of the craft dinner masks the glug of the bottle. So uh, not only you get some whiskey, you get some drunken food. All right, here it is. So I paid 375 Canadian dollars for this. So full secondary price, um, but for something this limited, I jumped at it and as I said, these things went super, super fast. So Puna Haben, it is the new uh, limited edition burgundy cast. I don't know if you can see that, it's so much glare. Burgundy finish, 2005 distillate, bottled 2020, uh, limited to just 600 bottles. Um, heard good things about this. It's got a pretty decent score in whiskey base. I think just around a 90. 
Um, so yeah, bottled, sorry, distilled 2005, bottled 2020. So that makes it 14-ish, 14 and a half years old. Nacho filter, nacho color, 60.7% um, ABV. So yeah, really excited about this one. Um, as I said, super limited and I kind of saw it, the post went up um, and I didn't really hesitate. I just put in my uh, buy it now comment. And uh, like I said, within three or four minutes, every single bottle was accounted for. I think the seller found a couple more and uh, ended up selling a total of 10 or so. Um, but yeah, he must have bought two cases or got two cases somehow, which is a lot considering there's only 600 of this, 600 bottles of this available. Uh, what else did I write down about this? Uh, oh yeah, so it's a refill hogshead finished in uh, burgundy cask. I'm not really sure if I've had a burgundy cask finish before. Um, some different French wine finishes. I'm not sure anything uh, burgundy descent or not. I'm trying to think about that. Let me know in the chat if anyone's had any burgundy finished scotch before. Um, Robin's asking if this is straight from the distillery. I'm not sure. I don't think this was a distillery exclusive. I think this was a, a release. But then again, I'm not sure because it is only 600. That's a good question. I don't think so. I don't think it was a distillery only. So uh, refill hogshead and then finish for three years in Burgundy wine casks from Eastern France. Notes of espresso, dark chocolate. Cool. I don't know. Anyway, I'm excited for it. Um, these popped up on the UK secondary recently. I think I saw them for around 250 British pounds. So 250 British pounds that you're looking at, that's if you convert that to Canadian, that's about 420 or so. It's about $50 less than what I paid if you do the conversion. So I guess you could say uh, I paid market value for it. Um, of course, with those UK auctions, you got to pay 10% on top of that plus ship it. So it ends up being a lot more. Um, I think we should open one of these. What do you guys think? You want to vote in the chat? See what gets opened? You want to see the Buna opened? You want to see the George T. Stagg opened? Or do you want to see the Family Cast opened? Whatever one I open tonight, I'll give away a sample of it when we play the, uh, the dartboard game. James Brower in the house. What's up? South Florida. How's it going down there? Christopher David saying the Buna. Jason uh, saying the Buna. Mike saying the Buna. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to open the George T. Stag. I have his stag opened already. Um, so it seemed like it was not necessary to open the stag right now. So I'm not going to open the George T. Stag. And in, in all honesty, I'm probably going to end up trading this for something else. Just as I have, I have a 2017 open. I have a 2017 uh, unopened. And I have a 2018 on its way. So that's a lot. So is everyone saying Buna? Yeah, Buna it is. I was going to open the Buna anyway. <laughs> I was, I was going to open the Buna anyway. I'm super excited to try this one. Um, so let's open it up in class. The thing about this is, like, not too many people are going to open these, right? Only 600 bottles. There's not that much out there anyway. And uh, you got to figure a lot of people will just be collecting this bottle on the account of its scarce scarcity. 
It's like Buna went to a uh, a synthetic cork. I wonder if they, have they always done that. Yeah, I guess so. I like synthetic corks. I mean, I know some purists don't, but if the cork doesn't break and it doesn't like chip away and get rotty, I'm for that. Do a nice size pour in the first crack. Look at the color. Pretty dark. Pretty dark indeed. Definitely rich um, coffee espresso. For sure. This thing probably needs to breathe a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Yeah. It's not nosing like it's 60, that's for sure. So it uh, smells a little tight. But uh, I'll let this bad boy open up. Let's go for a little sip. You definitely get the full 60% ABV on the palate, without a doubt. It, it delivers freaking hard. And profile seems, even though it's rich, it doesn't like blow away your palate. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty tameable once you get past that ABV spike. Nice long finish on it. Lots of chocolate and coffee. Maybe like some um, raisiny, figgy kind of note too. First impressions, it's tight, but I think it's got a lot of potential. I'm going to put it, sit it aside for now. Normally I let this thing sit 45 minutes at least on first pour. First crack, something cast strength. Always let it sit for a long time. Open up. Um, oh, Peter White. So yeah, if you're just joining us, these are the three bottles that I uh, I won these two in the secondary in in lotto in lottos, and uh, this one I purchased straight out. It's the uh, Buna uh, Burgundy finish. Let's see if I can. There's so much glare. It's like the camera is so shitty. It won't. Anyway. Take my word for it. Um, big fan of Boone. I've been getting into some more Boone Habins recently. Um, actually, the person that sent me the uh, Glen Farkless sent out a couple really awesome samples, including a 33-year-old Boone Habin, uh, the Octave, I believe it was. One of those. It was really delicious. Um, really, really good. Had that the other night. All right. So while the Buna sits and breathes a little bit, um, what else can I tell you about? Oh, recently I really did. I did a really cool uh, virtual tasting with uh, Toronto Whiskey Society and Dr. Don Livermore uh, of Wiser's Master Blender. We tried some of his experimental uh, whiskeys. They're uh, currently in production some of them in production some of them just uh you know pure spec not sure if they're releasing them or not i can't really tell you what we tried because they said we couldn't we couldn't share it um, but i'll let you know that they are doing another expression of lot 40. uh it's gonna be bottled i think at 48 percent abv um and i believe it's a double maturation um, I guess I'll just leave it at that. I don't know if I'm, I probably said too much already. Whatever. All uh, there's no such. All hype is good hype, right? Um, Alexander saying, "What's your opinion on Climb Leash 14?" I love Climb Leash 14. I think Climb Leash 14 is one of the best value scotches out there. Um, 
the notes you get on the honeys, the tropical fruits, um, the like classic Klein Leaf style, like the kind of like the waxy kind of note you get on that. Um, that like crayon is really, really good. So I love Klein Leash 14. That reminds me, I, uh, I will be doing a Klein Leash review really soon. Um, I'll be doing the 14 plus a whole bunch of independent bottlings of Klein Leash. Uh, thanks to Richard, he sent me a bunch of samples. I got a couple bottles. So I'm gonna do like four bottles um, plus like I have a six to eight samples too. So I'm gonna do a big Klein Leash mega review um, and score a whole bunch of uh, single pass of that stuff. Red Beers Racing coming with a super chat. Thank you so much, sir. I got the gong out. Um, I've been using this gong um, for like COVID, um, I guess you'd call it appreciation, noise making. Um, what is it? For health, yeah, for healthcare workers. So like for, uh, you probably have this in, in your city too. Here in Toronto, it was a thing. Um, every single night at 7.30, people uh, come outside on their balconies, whatever, clang pots and pans in appreciation for all the frontline healthcare workers. Our neighbors across the street have been doing it every single night, rain or shine, since the middle of March. Um, so sometimes I come outside and give them a little, little gong to go along with all their pots and pans. Uh, so thanks, uh, Redbeard. Appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Starting to open up a bit more. Just like a lot more since I first cracked it. That's good. Uh, Timothy saying that the Buna Brandy Cognac cask coming to the LCBO for 180. Really? Definitely have to pick that up for 180. For sure. Tyler saying, trying to find a Lefroig lore at the LCBO for a while now. That might be long gone. Um, but you can check their inventory. They always have their inventory up there. Oh, Whiskey in the Six coming in with a big super chat. What's up, man? Uh, Rob, let me know if you want to jump in. I'll send you the link if I can. I've never used um, StreamYard before. Cheers to Rob. Um, but I'm sure I could figure out how to do that. If you, uh, if you want to hop in. Um, what was I talking about before? Oh, yeah. Um, Dr. Don Livermore and the Toronto Whiskey Society Tasting. So, like, virtual tasting, uh, we had, I think there was, like, 45 people or so. Um, and he walked us through, I think, six different whiskeys. So it's kind of cool. Like, Toronto Whiskey Society, they got all the bottles. They poured out all the samples, delivered the samples to all of us. Um, we all had them in front of us. And Don Livermore did, like, a presentation, uh, Zoom meeting. It was really cool. And to try some of his experimental stuff, it was really interesting to him, like, talk about it and stuff. If you, uh, if you haven't seen Dr. Don Livermore, check out Whiskey Tube. He's been on a bunch of channels. Um, Trenny and C was on there a couple times, I believe. I think Scotch, uh, Scotch Test Dummies as well. So look him up. He's always a great, super knowledgeable about whiskey, of course. Um, yeah, you guys know. He's a good guy. Um, all right. Maybe we should play the uh, the dartboard game. So if you're unaware, um, semi-blind dartboard game, uh, what I've done is I've taken 20 different bottles from my bar. Uh, they all have something in common. They're all sherry matured or sherry finished, or they have some sherry element to them. Um, Caitlin, my awesome assistant, uh, has assigned a random number to those 20 different samples from 1 to 20, match up with the dartboard. Uh, I throw a dart, whatever number it lands on, she pours me the sample blind, and I try to guess what it is. So what I'm going to do is something that's going to play along with me. I'm going to give you guys a trivia question. The winner of that trivia question will automatically win 
a sample of this new Buna Habin uh, burgundy finish. I'm going to go through the blind sample. If I cannot correctly guess my own whiskey, if I don't know what the sample is, I'm going to throw in an extra Sipper Social Club glass, just like this one. So I'll send you the sample uh, guaranteed. And then if I get it wrong, you're going to get the glass as well. Uh, if I can figure out screen share, I will show you the whiskeys that I have done before. Uh, screen share. Um, okay, there. All right, hopefully you're seeing that. So 20 whiskeys. Uh, I've done this three times before. I got two of them right. Uh, the Ovini Tun 1401, I think, was the very first time we did this. Uh, I guess that one correct. That one has a very distinct uh, barrel char. I call it like gunpowder kind of note to it. That one was fairly simple for me to get. Um, the second time I did it was the Deanson 20. That one has a very distinct note, at least the bottle that I had, which was previously raw whiskey in the sixes bottle. Um, that one had this like kind of ammonia kind of note. We actually think the bottle is off because it seemed like it wasn't living up to what other people say the Deanson 20 is. So that one, I think actually Rob, you were here for that. Rob was here for that one. We actually both guessed it correctly blind. Uh, we guessed that one right. And then Belvini Doublewood 12, which I think should have been an easy guess. Uh, Rob was also here for that. And that was the night that we cracked those Broras. Um, and I think Rob, Rob guessed it right away. We did this, uh, Rob was like immediately, he thought it was Buna 12, or sorry, uh, Belvini Doublewood 12. Um, he guessed it right away. And I was like, there's no way it's that. And my palate, I guess, was just off because there was no way I was thinking it was Balvini at all. Didn't get like the honey, didn't get the, I get like a chocolate, milk chocolate note on that whiskey, didn't get that at all. So I was, I was way off. And I convinced Rob uh, <laughs> to change his answer. He nailed it like instantly, instantly. He's like, that's, that's Balvini 12. And then everyone in the chat was going nuts. Like, Rob is the man, he's got the best palate. And then uh, I convinced him to change his answer. So we ended up giving away like extra stuff that night because uh, because of me. Anyway, it's a fun game. Um, so first we need someone to, uh, to win. Trivia question. So it's gonna be the first person to answer correctly according to my chat, which is delayed from your chat. Um, so if it comes up first for you and doesn't come first in mine, I'm sorry. That's just the way she's gotta go. The trivia question is, for a sample of the Buna Burgundy, first person to answer correctly, what year was this Buna distilled in? I'm looking for the year of distillation for this bottle right now. I said it before. I said it. A couple times, I think, actually. Oh, this thing's getting good. I don't see any answers in my chat yet. I think my chat, the StreamYard chat is always more delayed, I believe. Okay, now they're coming in. Paul. Paul Carter, 2005 is correct. Uh, Puffs and Drams, you were a close second uh, on mine. And then Roland, you got in there as well. Um, but Paul, Paul Carter, you're in there, bud. I got you as uh, number one. So let me just remember that. Okay. All right. So yeah, uh, it's a 2005 distillate bottled. It says right here, actually. Distilled on 10-10-2005. Uh, so October 10th, and then it was bottled on January 23rd, 2020. So you're looking at 14 years and about two, two and a half months or so. So I will pour you a sample of that. Uh, I'll do it right now. I got a sample jar ready to go. I 
I don't think you're going to get too many uh, reviews of this whiskey just because it's so limited. So it'd be interesting to hear your opinion on it. Oh, of course, we'll redo a, a review of it and uh, probably lend it to my boy, Whiskey in the Six, so he can do a review of it as well. Because sharing is caring, and he has shared more with me than I with him. So got to keep paying him back, keep the karma going well. So there you go, sir. So I'll send you this. Um, also, you're going to have a chance to win a Super Social Club glass, just like this one, if I get the thing wrong. All right, so, Caitlin, if you don't mind, I'm going to throw a dart. So again, this is how it works. I'm going to throw a dart. It's going to be uh, Caitlin has the master key, and only she knows which whiskey is which. So I'm going to throw a dart. She'll grab whatever sample that is. She'll write down what it is and show it to you guys. I'll put it here. We have like a little cardboard thing. So she'll bring it over and you guys can see what it is. I'm going to close my laptop down. So I won't be able to see, won't be able to see the chat. Um, so all right, here we go. Ready? Of course I miss, you always miss the first try. There we go. What is it? 12. Okay, so I've got a uh, Glen Karen I just taped up with uh, electrical tape, so I won't be able to tell the color. So obviously uh, there will be some giveaway with color, so I won't be able to tell the color. So Caitlin's gonna get that one ready to go. I'll show you the list again one more time if I can do another screen share. Uh, how do I do that? Screen share. that there we go okay so here they are again um so there's like an abalur on there an amroot um we've done those three so they're off um a bunch of glendronics and a bunch of macallans so <laughs> if i grab one of those it might be pretty hard to distinguish uh the topomori 21's down there too some of these whiskeys don't even have anymore we just have the sample left Highland Parks are in there, uh, a couple of Cavalans. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm, one of these is gonna be it, except for the ones we've obviously done before. So I'm gonna grab a sip of water. And uh, Caitlin will let me know when she's ready. And uh, Paul, you'll be cheering against me. <laughs> um, you guys might all be cheering against me. We'll see. All right. I'm going to not close this, but put it down so I won't be able to see it. All right. Uh, I will. Here's this, this is the glass. Move those. Yeah, sure. All right, so Caitlin has written down what it is and she's about to pour it. I'm just gonna turn my hat down so I can't see anything. And I will just continue to nose this boon and let you know what I think. So yeah, already this thing is opened up. Getting even more like coffee notes, um, like that rich kind of sweet uh, almond note too. That first like alcohol, um, Hit is kind of dissipated a little bit. But yeah, I think this is going to be a really nice whiskey, guys. Once this thing opens up properly, it's really rich. I mean, you guys saw the color of that. It's really, really dark. So, Paul, I'm excited for you to, to try this, man. Put a cap on this. Put it to the side. You let me know when you're ready. There's more water. Can you get me set up? Okay. We are good to go. Okay. Is that focused for everyone? You guys can see you guys can see what it is. Yes. Okay. 
All right. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's not focused. Okay, well, maybe just hold it up to the camera. So well, they I did can... that already. I'll do uh, it again, okay. Just hold it up there for a couple of seconds until it auto focuses, and then they can see what I'm drinking. Right now, the nose smells like nothing. <laughs> okay. Am I good? Yep. Okay. All right, so you guys know what it is. It smells like sherry. <laughs> I mean, I've really done myself in because there's so many whiskeys on that list that smell similar. I got the list in front of me. So I know what it's not. I don't think it's the Amroot because I think the Amroot um, definitely has like that little funky kind of characteristic to it. I would, I don't think it's a Tobamori. The Glen, there's a Glenbergy 18 on here, which is an independent bottling from Aston Morris. And that one is really weird. I don't think it's that one either. Let's go for a sip. Okay. So lots of rich sherry notes in here. Uh, definitely like a little bit of nuttiness and chocolate. Long finish. I can say this is a pretty decent ABV. And I'm going to say it's got some, some age to it. I'm going to say it's not a 12-year-old. Are there 12 year olds on here? No, the only 12 is the McAllen 12 Sherry. I think it's older than that. Oh, it's, it's definitely not. It's definitely not the McAllen Classic Cut because that one tastes pretty hot and youthful. This is not that. I sound pretty confident in that, but. Uh, I'm going to say ABV, maybe around 50%, although none of these whiskeys have a 50% ABV, I don't think. It's not Highland Park. can cross that off the list. Definitely not Highland Park. So what am I left with then? I'm left with the Avalor Abuna, which I don't think that it is, although... Mm. No. It's not, I'm gonna say this is not cast strength. So that's pretty much limited down to the Glendronics or the McAllens. Cause I don't think the Cavalans are cast strength. The Avalur is obviously cast strength. It's not a Highland Park. I don't think it's Tobamori cause that's more light. I believe on the Sherry. This is a definitely like a heavy, heavy Sherry. <sighs> I'm leaning more towards Glendronic than McAllen just because I'm not getting that McAllen, uh, like, um, sulfur kind of note. McAllen has, like, kind of like a house style. Although, you know what? Maybe it's McAllen 18. But I think the ABV is a little bit higher than 43. I haven't had McAllen 18 in a long time. Rob, since we've been gone now, a few minutes. Hmm. Okay, Rob, I'll bring you on once I am. Once I uh, mess up this blind. All right. I think I'm going to say, I think I'm going to say it's one of the Glendronics. I think it's got to be one of the Glendronics. Now, which one? It's so hard. The Glendronic 2002 11-year-old single cast. That was a really, really good one that Rob gave me. And I believe it was a bottling uh, for... One of the whiskey stores out in Alberta. It was really, really good. It could be that one. 
for sure. I'm pretty sure that one was cast strength, which this could very well be. The Glendronic 15 and the Glendronic 18 are really, really close because I believe my 15 was in actuality a 20 year old whiskey and my 18 in actuality was a 20 year old whiskey. So I'm definitely, actually, you know what? I said it was a higher AB or a higher age before. It doesn't taste like 12, 11 years old. And I don't think it's a Glendronic 21 revival or um, parliament because that one had a little bit of, um, a little bit of a uh, PX in it. I don't know if this has PX in it. But the Glendronic 21 was also 48%, and that's probably right around where this is. Fuck, maybe it is the Glendronic 21. All right, I'm saying it's either Glendronic 15, Glendronic 18, or Glendronic 21. That's what I'm limiting it down to. One more sip. Now that finish. I think it's Glendronic 15. I really do. I think that that finish just like sparked a little little memory of that Glendronic 15 revival. All right. <laughs> I can almost flip a coin. All right, I'm going to go with the gut. I'm going to say Glendronic 15. What was it? Glendronic 18. Glendronic 18? Yeah. Oh. So close. Oh. That was really impressive. Oh. oh, man. Well, that was close. I was. I honestly thought it was I, – I, I was thinking 18 the whole time, and then that finish just felt like it was a little bit maybe more youthful. Yeah. Anyway, um, congrats. So sample plus whiskey glass coming your way. Um, let me get whiskey in the six on here. Um, invite. All right, Rob, I'm going to shoot this to your email. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, okay. Compose to whiskey. Hi, Rob. I just uh, emailed you. <clears throat> so, yeah, close, really close. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was pretty pretty easy to go as process of elimination because it, it definitely wasn't some of these for sure. And now that I'm now that I'm uh, nosing it again, knowing what it is, but it's it's so tough because like I, I reviewed these two back to back. I think I scored them almost the exact same. I think I did score them the exact same, and they're very very similar. The eighteen and the fifteen because. My uh, 15, I believe, is it a 2000, uh, bottled 2014, maybe. And then my, my 18 is bottled 2016 or 17. Anyway, they're both 20 years old. Like the real age is both 20 years. So they're very, very close. It's a good whiskey. It is really nice. All right. Um, how do I know if Rob's in? I don't even know. Oh, there he is. All right. Are you in? Can you hear me, man? I can hear you. Can you hear me? What's up, dude? What's going on, man? Good job on that. That was actually very impressive. Thanks. Yeah. It was, uh, I was really surprised because, like, it's, um, it's not easy doing blinds. Remember that one time I was talking about before when we did... Belvini 
uh, 12 double wood and you guessed it instantly. And I was like, there's no way is that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you never know. Honestly, I always find it's best to just go with your instincts. Like you're usually right when you go with your instincts. Yeah. I said it had some age to it and then I went with the younger one. Yeah, well. It's just that finish, like it felt like it was maybe the 15. Yeah, it's easy to talk yourself out of it. When, yeah. Because you just, I don't know, you doubt yourself, right? It's easy. Um, okay, Dead Chipmunk was asking something and now he's uh, pissed off. What did you ask, my friend? Uh, favorite whiskey cocktail, old fashioned without a doubt. Uh, I did a video on it. Um, Smoky Maple Old Fashioned. Check that out. Try it at home. It is delicious. I give that to everyone and they love it. Yeah, that is awesome. You made that for me. It's really, really nice. Yeah, you tried that. Yeah. Um, so what's going on over there, man? Got some. Honestly, this bottle, I keep getting going back to it. It's the, the cash drain. Oh, yeah. Batch three, the 10 year old. I love it, man. I think it's fantastic. I love Ben Alki. Like, yeah, I think you have to really like their distillery characteristics to enjoy them. And I think a lot of people are on the fence. Like, they're 50 50. Some really enjoy it, some don't like it at all. I love it. Yeah. I think I don't, I don't think I've had a bad Glen Alki before, to be honest with you. Yeah, the only one that I thought was going to be bad ended up being really, really good, which was the 15-year-old. Like, it, it was bad at first. Not bad, but it wasn't great at first. It was very reserved, and then it got a lot better as they opened yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this Buna is good, man. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. Yeah, that one looks pretty spectacular. That's the one that you just got in, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just got it... Uh... Canada Post is super behind in all their packages. Like these things just sat in uh, Mississauga, yeah. which is like 20 kilometers from here for 10 days. I just kept like refreshing the tracking. I'm just like, come on guys. It's like, I can come get it from you. You can be there in 10 minutes. I know. I know. They, they should actually give that option. Yeah. If you just want to like, pick it up from the warehouse. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool actually. Yeah, because I'm kind of waiting on some stuff as well. Mm. And it's just saying there. It says it's, gonna, it's coming tomorrow, but we'll see. I mean, I get it. Like, they're super behind. You know, I, I think they're they're limited staff. They're obviously COVID rules, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like Christmas every day for the last three months, right? Everybody's <laughs> So it's all online orders and online shopping because nobody can shop at an actual story or they're just starting to now yeah some covid rules uh getting lax a little bit here um which is promising yeah um they up the uh limited what was it uh groups of five or more now became 10 or more i heard that yeah so, so that's all right yeah so we're, we're getting there uh, my sports teams are coming back soccer i can start playing soccer again they're hoping for sometime in july so that's exciting has um, anything been shared with you as far as like uh, professional sports goes? You know, I'm not really in the loop, even though I work in the television industry. But uh, uh, no, I don't have any insider information. Whatever you've heard is uh, whatever I know. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Got a nice little look over there. Is that, is that glass that dark or is it just the optics like? The Buna? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really dark, dude. Like yeah. I know this, this camera is not the best. Um but yeah, it is dark. That's super dark. Yeah, it's really dark. Three years in the French wine cast, so Yeah. That's a, sol that's a solid finish. That's gonna be a cool head to head with the Cavalon one, because they're both French wine. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. You know what I was gonna do? I was gonna do it head to head with um Des Moines red wine. Yeah. That, that, which I do because I have this Moine right here, which is one of my favorite uh, heavily peated whiskeys ever. Yeah, that was really good. You figured someone out with me. Yeah, I love this whiskey. Um, gave it a huge smirk on the review. It just ticks all the boxes for me. It's going to be a little different, obviously, because it's peated versus this one that's not, but. 
Yeah. I'd be very curious to, I mean, but I have has a very specific type of peat. Like they're, they're not like anybody. I, I guess that's a peat. That's common with peat. There's nobody really like anybody else when it comes to their style of peat. That's true. Because in my opinion, or in my experience with some of the Moines, uh, it doesn't necessarily translate to like that Isla style. It doesn't have necessarily all that brininess, um, the coastalness. It's more kind of like uh, a thick kind of smoke, like a campfire smoke or mm -hmm. uh, a wood smoke versus the medicinal kind of smoke. It reminds me a little bit more of like a, a jag or like a Talisker kind of peat than uh, yeah. the Freud or... Right. Our bag. Yeah. Um, so Richard's saying, what happened to that tangy aftertaste? So <laughs> one thing that I get with a lot of Glendronics is a little bit of a tangy aftertaste. Um, you know, it didn't have it. It didn't have the tangy aftertaste for me this time. And that's, maybe that's why I went with the 15. Because I think in my review, I said that the 15 might have had the least amount of tangy aftertaste to it versus the the other the other ones. But yeah, I didn't pick up any tanginess, which is weird because I normally do. It could be just because it's been sitting in a bottle for a very long time. It kind That's of true. That sample has been sitting there uh oh like for a year. When when did I start doing this thing? A long time ago. Oh I'm sorry, I'm not keeping up with the chat. Well I gotta switch mine to live comments as well. Um, Fumar is saying something. Sorry, what is, what's up? Scotch Ledger, I need to know how these guys are ordering whiskey. Um, well, uh, these are all from secondary market. So um, I don't, I'm not sure where they originated from, but I got them through private sales. If you want to look up UK auctions, um, I've used um scotch whiskey auctions before or whiskey auctioneer if you're looking for stuff uh there depends where you are i guess cool. and, yeah um, i'm lucky enough to have a uh, family in the united states and uh when i can't ship to ontario which is never i can uh, get stuff shipped uh, to some different u.s addresses and then either go get the bottles or grab them when my family comes over. So yeah, it's hard. It's it, Ontario is one of the worst places. Um, but uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta form some connections, I guess. Yeah, we we are pretty resourceful despite how limited our resources are. Yeah. Uh, someone else has some other questions in the chat. I kind of forget now. Whiskey Mysteries in the house. I've been watching a lot of Whiskey Mystery. Um, Phil, love your channel, love your content. I uh, need to learn how to do all your cool cool effects. This guy's got the 3D stuff down packed. And uh, yeah, love your stuff. If you haven't checked out uh, Whiskey Mystery, go give him a sub. So what's new, man? What do you, uh, what do you got coming up on the channel? So I have two videos recorded. I was supposed to edit and have one up already this week, but because I did, I think I did three videos last week, which is more than I usually do two. So I decided to wait a little bit. Um, I do hope to go live this week, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, yeah. It's difficult now. Like I'm finding it more difficult than ever. And I'm even comparing that to like when I'm off in the summer because the kids are, going to bed much later and then by the time I actually have time to sit down I'm exhausted because keeping them entertained is, is a lot of work plus teaching them plus teaching my own students all these different things <laughs> I can only imagine yeah it's, it's been interesting man it's I can been only imagine the nice weather will help um well, we can tell these guys that we're, uh, you've mentioned it before, I've mentioned it before, uh, we're looking to do a podcast, and it's not just going to be a regular audio only, we're going to do video as well, so podcast format, um, we're going to air it on both of our channels, so it'll be video, 
We'll also air it on uh, your uh, every podcast streaming uh, outlet as well. And it's going to be essentially like a well-structured live show with graphics and text and um, video and media. Um, kind of like going through a bunch of different things. We'll have topics like, um, you know, a rant about a whiskey, our opinions on what we like, what we dislike about the whiskey uh, markets, et cetera. Um, maybe we'll do a little segment on secondary markets, different things we found, how prices are moving uh, in that regard. Um, I think our plan is to do like at least one whiskey uh, review during the podcast as well. So we'll review one whiskey every time and just whatever little timbits and um, accolades we will uh, we'll come up with along the way as well. Uh, yeah. Maybe even comment on whiskey tube in general uh what people have been doing on whiskey tube reviews um etc yeah it, we said that we were probably going to keep it to like a an affordable whiskey right like something like pretty easy accessible yeah i think that we should do like you know something that's good value it doesn't have to necessarily have to be you know super cheap and doesn't have to necessarily be super expensive but something that's good value. So if like a whiskey is 150 bucks, but it's really good for what you get, I think we'll try to stick to reviews um, of whiskeys that we think are good, good buys. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, in the chat, Paulo is asking which family cast that is there, the fun part of it. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're just joining us, uh, the Glen Farkless family cast that I, that I won, it's a 2000 or sorry, a 1993 uh, bottled 2014, 20 years old. Um, refill hogshead, very light in color. I would say it's probably third fill at least. If you can get a good idea yeah. of the color, they're very light for a family cast for sure. Probably the lightest I've ever seen. Definitely looks like an ex bourbon, but uh, it is. Refill Sherry Hogshead. Kind of like more the entry entry level for family casts, I suppose. It's always fun winning those because a lot of times, like if it's in an irreplaceable bottle, when you buy it, it's that much harder to crack it open. But when you win it, it's like, yeah, why not? Yeah, it's the thing, right? It's like, um, you know, that bottle only cost me $55. Um, so it's if it turns out to be something that's not super awesome, then you know I'm only out whatever. Now I'm not including all the times I I uh, join lottos and miss. Um, so if you added that up, I mean, who knows how much that bottle actually cost me? But we don't talk about those. We don't. We don't have. We don't have that up. Yeah, we don't. We don't talk about that. A <laughs> um, couple more questions in the chat. Shipping costs from UK auctions. Um, shipping costs in the UK auctions are very, very expensive, um, but it goes down the more that you ship. So the way UK auctions work, if you win an auction, uh, you pay for your bottle and you can keep it with them um, until you either win more auctions and collect more bottles. So they do one a month. So let's say, you know, you win a bottle a month for four or five months, then you can ship all of that at once. And the cost per bottle shipping will be less than if you just ship one. I think if you ship one bottle by itself, I think it's around 60 to 70 pounds, which is crazy. Um, but what you can also do is you can also bundle your bottles with someone else's order as well. So if you know someone that has a couple bottles there, you have a couple bottles, you can combine all of those together and get them shipped to one spot. Now, shipping from the UK to the United States, I think they charge you a 25% tariff now. I'm not 100% on that. And it might just be for Scotch whiskey. So if it's like, if it's a world whiskey or if it's an Irish whiskey, I don't think the tariff is applied, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't been on UK auctions in a while, so I can't tell you. But in my experience, um, which I did them a couple years ago, um, I had about five or six bottles until I ended up shipping them over because it is very very expensive yeah I think, right i think it is just scotch just but scotch with the tariffs yeah. that applies to auction that's uh something probably worth looking into 
Because if you buy it retail from the UK, then yes, you have to pay that tariff. But I'm not sure if it applies to that something like that. Oh, uh, Kevin asked if I'm doing anything with uh, the mini barrels in the seasoning. I have not, although I was talking to our good friend Jasper about it. Um, I think we're, I think my next thing might be to do like some kind of double maturation. So like season a cask with a wine and then season another cask with a rum and then throw it in the wine cask first and then in the rum cask right after that and do a series of bottles uh, through there. That could be interesting. Um, so maybe something like that, but I have I have nothing seasoning right now. Uh, I just did a whole bunch. Um, actually, I sent some to Phil. He really liked it. He liked the uh, the Octomore. Recently did some finishes, three different ones I sent to uh, Whiskey Mystery. Him and uh, Deepa tried them on a live show and I, they liked the, uh, the Octomore the best. So that was a blend of Octomore 9.1, 8.1, 9.1, 10.1, which I did in a port cask, and I thought it turned out really good. Yeah, that was awesome. I don't think you've tried that one, Rob. I guess I should send you some of that. You didn't bring that over the, that night? No, you tried the uh, the Springbank 10, and you tried the uh, uh, the Lagavulin 8, I believe. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That Springbank 10 is pretty epic. Yeah, I thought, those, I thought those three were, like, the three best ones that have come out so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with those. Peter White's asking if our Whiskey Rant reviews are going to be anything from the LCBO. Uh, yeah, LCBO has a couple <laughs> a couple good value whiskeys. Um, not as many as other places, but, you know, I think for people in Toronto or Ontario, it's always good to, to do something that, review a whiskey that uh, if they enjoy the review, they could go out and get it if they wanted to. I think I have one that's actually, I just bought recently from the LCBO that's pretty good value. It's the Cragnamore 12 year old, the new, the Diageo special from 2019. I think that would be worth talking about. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty nice. How much was that one? It was 140, I believe. Yeah. But it's a cast strength. It's rare for any Cragnamore to be cast strength as far as like what we're privy to so yeah. it's actually pretty cool it's a it's definitely in the same ballpark as the Talisker 15 that came out in the same series i haven't tried the lago in 12 but i've heard that this is better than that so okay nice uh michael's asking are you guys excited for the 2020 lafroy karchis port and wine cast yes I am super excited for that. Um, I love how they're going back to port, uh, even though it is with some other wine casts involved. Because uh, the the Karchis Portwood is my favorite Karchis that I've had. Really, really like it. Um, so yeah, super excited for that. That's going to be a hard bottle to track. I think there's a lot of buzz about that one. And uh, we do get it in Ontario. It comes in. Uh, it goes fast. I did a video of the Fino. Check out my review of the video. You know, I go on like a little bit of a rant about the LCBO because they were essentially the manager was hiding bottles um, under the counter, which I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to do. But I'm pretty sure she was hiding them for people she knew or potentially buying them herself. Um, so yeah, it's always it's always uh, some hardships you have to go through and getting special releases at the LCBO for sure. Yeah, it's, that's, uh, that kind of stuff happens all the time in the LCBO, so. Uh, Ken Mars asking, have we tried the WeBC? No, you know what? I, <laughs> I talked to someone in Alberta. They're not getting the WeBeastie until the fall. So that's probably the first time it will be coming into Canada will be the fall and the LCBO probably even later than that. So no, I haven't. I saw some Wee BC come up in the Canadian secondary market today and they were valued at 260 Canadian dollars. And I wasn't really feeling like that evaluation was something that I wanted to uh, be involved with. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably gonna come out to when it comes here, probably 80 bucks. It 
it's that high. And I, and I don't think it's very limited. It's just that novelty of being one of the first, I guess. Yeah. So the thing about the secondary market in Canada, which I haven't touched on yet, is that there's always a premium because a lot of the bottles uh, don't come into Canada or they come through the United States. Like, for instance, this stag, I'm almost 100% sure that someone brought this in across the border so you always have to pay premium for that uh getting it into canada um like i said this is valued at around 700 canadian dollars which is like 515 us and in the us these on the secondary will be about 425 450 us dollars so we definitely do pay a premium um for whiskey coming into canada especially bourbon like this for sure um the LCBO gets this every year. It goes into allocated lottery. I think they get maybe, what would you say, 50 George T. Sags a year? Yeah, about that. Around 50, maybe, maybe maybe 75 or so. Uh, Peter White might know how many yeah, he, how many George T. Sags come to Ontario. And Ontario it's, being the biggest province, we'd probably get the most. So whatever other provinces would get, it would be less. So let's say the entire country gets, you know, 150 bottles a year so yeah the majority of the stuff comes into the u.s and uh, definitely pay a premium to get it across the border yeah peter is saying that he would pay 60 bucks for the vbc I think yeah i don't i don't the, the only reason why it's valued at that right now is because you can't get it in canada yet so. yeah yeah if it's a, a regular release i can't I can't see it being more than 75, 80 bucks because the 10 year old is a hundred bucks. So that would have been sense. Yeah. Our bag in Ontario is, is, is grossly overpriced. Yeah. But we'll see. Peter also grabbed one of those Krangamore 12 year olds that I was telling you about the cast strength treated version. Oh, nice. <laughs> Peter White saying they get zero bottles of the stag in his experience. Yeah, I haven't had much luck on this on the uh, LCBO allocation lottery either. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget that experience I had with that Alberta store that I found two William Little Wellers just sitting on the website on this yeah. like, just what was that like a year and a half, two years ago? That was crazy. That yeah, that was like a monopoly, like uh, bank air in your favor. Collect two William Leroux Wellers. Yeah. Uh, actually, I got a William Leroux Weller from a store in Alberta because my mom, being the amazing woman that she is and hunts whiskey for me, went through, uh, I think it was Calgary Airport because they have a, a liquor store there called The Cellar, I believe. And uh, she was going on a trip. I sent her a list of whiskey to look for. She... Um, gave it to the clerk there and uh and we ended up getting something from him. i forget what it was but anyway formed a relationship this was probably like five years ago formed a relationship with the uh the manager of that store and actually i was able to get a william the weller uh pretty much at cost i think i paid 165 canadian dollars for it and it was a 2016 release that's you still, still have it i haven't cracked it yet still got it in the show what, what year was that 2001 16. wow yeah Hmm. Very nice. Yeah, that store got three bottles, which would be a case, I think, three bottles a year. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was uh, kind enough to uh, to give me one. Yeah, they. Are, options, but that's definitely my favorite bourbon. I think. The yeah, Weller. yeah, you're you're a big fan. I'm more of a George C. Stead guy. You're more of a Weller guy. Yeah. The um. I had some Elijah Craig 12 year old cast rank or batch barrel proof, whatever, whatever the American terminology for cast rank is. Barrel proof. Barrel proof, yeah. Um, last night, I, I don't know. I have all these bourbons sitting in my house. <laughs> you want to you wanna bash bourbon? Is this going to be this thing? Yeah? No, I'm not bashing bourbon. Okay. Just, they just sit there for a long time. <laughs> Um, yeah, bourbon for me is, is totally just, um, mood, you know, a lot of times I'm feeling bourbon, 
way more than scotch and uh other times vice versa just depends i think uh, bourbon's one of those things where i don't know i find i have to pay less attention and it's just something that you can enjoy without like fully focusing on what you're drinking whereas with scotch like if you want to get the best out of that scotch like you kind of have to like have a quiet yeah. I, I 100% agree with you on that. Um, I love just either like sitting on the on the balcony with a bourbon, sitting watching a hockey game with a bourbon, something I can just tall pour and like a in a tumbler even and just uh, chill with it. Whereas scotch, you know, you gotta cons some of them you gotta you know give put your time in, knows it a bit more, you know, yeah, give it the due diligence that it deserves yeah bourbon holds up better outside for sure like you, you'll still get the nuances from on the nose and on the palate that you would normally whereas scotch some of them you take it outside and it's like you have no idea what scotch that is that could be anything yeah 100 this uh this burgundy cast opening up way more now i've added probably over 10 drops of water and it's been sitting open for what uh say what an hour maybe a little bit less than an hour Getting all the sweetness now, like vanilla is coming through. I can't believe the color on that. It's dark, man. I know you like your dark whiskey. It, honestly, it's just, it's all like psychological. It just looks like it would taste good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and another distillery adds E158 to their whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Um, anyway. I'm going to start wrapping it up. I wanted to let everyone know uh, more Super Soul Club t-shirts have been ordered, um, more sizes. So right now I'm only down to mediums and larges, but I've got more coming in all the way up to 3XL. Uh, so those will be available on the website when I get them, uh, hopefully mid-month. So next week or the week after that, and uh, I'll get those up on the website. Um, what else was I going to mention tonight? Um, those shirts are a great fit too, by the way. Like yeah, I didn't cheap out on the shirt. I got a good quality fabric. Um, the shirts cost me a bit more, but I think it's definitely worth it. Cause like, I want to wear this shirt and I don't want it to be, you know, subpar. I like to wear comfortable stuff and this fabric is great. Yeah, it is. I really like it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a good quality shirt. So those will be up on the website soon. Of course, if you join the Patreon and you are at the influencer tier, um you can choose between a whiskey glass or a t-shirt right off the hop and then all the merchandise eventually becomes yours um as you continue on through the patronage so check out patreon if you want um like i mentioned at the beginning of this uh video my next review well it'll be coming up soon it's gonna be a big one it's gonna be klein leash uh, i got a whole bunch of independent bottles of klein leash i'm gonna do comparison to the 14 year old uh, Richard's kind enough to send me a bunch of awesome samples of some independent bottles that he got some, um, some ones that got a lot of buzz in the whiskey world, some very exclusive bottlings. So that video is going to be done, uh, hopefully soon. And I'm going to do, um, a top, um, blind. What's the best 18 year old scotch. There's some patrons who suggested they wanted to see some different 18 year olds reviewed and i thought it would be cool just to get as many 18 year old scotches as i could and kind of do them all blind and kind of see what one would come out on top um so yeah those uh, videos are going to be in the works so stay tuned for that uh you mentioned what you got coming up on the channel oh yeah our podcast too hopefully that will be uh off the ground soon so keep an eye out for that yeah i think i mean I don't think anybody's going to arrest us if I sneak you in and we do a, a podcast soon. Yeah, I think the, uh, you know, with them lifting the social distance, doubling the amount of people that you can uh, chill with, I think, uh, I think it's okay if me and you get together and do a podcast. Yeah, yeah, we'll get that done because we have a whole bunch of samples from um, Malt Reviews Narby that we have to get to. Yeah, I talked to Narby today. Um, yeah, we have all those epic, epic samples that he sent us. So uh, we can finally get to uh, doing a couple of those because I'm super pumped for that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, cool. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. Uh, hope you like the video. Um, 
this Buna is really good. It is really good stuff. So uh, look for my review on this. Uh, of course, the uh, upper tier Patreons, this will be available to you as a sample. Uh, it might find its way on to Drink My Bar, perhaps, as the uh, maybe the mystery dram. So look out for that. Um, it's really good. It is really good. And it's opening up and it's just coming alive right now so i'm gonna spend the next probably half an hour with this bad boy and um yeah so thanks so much for joining me tonight rob thanks for coming in appreciate it uh caitlin thank you for uh your assistance this evening as well Caitlin's awesome. um so yeah cheers have a good one <laughs>